In this video, I'm talking about my experience comparing this Intel 10th generation i5 NUC running Windows 11 now versus this base level latest model M1 Mac Mini. What's better? Let's find out. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you might know two things. One, I'm a longtime Windows user and a PC builder. Two, I'm also a big Apple user for mobile, tablet, watch, and more. The thing I've tried a number of times though in the last few years is to transition over to a Mac computer as a daily driver in my office. I've mostly experimented doing this though using MacBooks and dock-based solutions, but lately I've been demoing an M1 Mac Mini for a few weeks after about a year of using that NUC as my home office daily driver. For reference, the NUC is a 10th gen i5 loaded with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte Sobrant PCI Express SSD. It had been running Windows 10 Pro until the insider builds of Windows 11 came along when I promptly upgraded to that. The Mac Mini is the latest model M1, but it's the base with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabyte SSD configuration running Mac OS Big Sur latest version. Additionally, I'm using both machines with a 43 inch Sony 4K newer model TV as my single office display and a Razer Huntsman keyboard with a Razer Naga mouse for input. I keep my iPhone and my iPad handily within reach at my desk along with the Depths Tech USB camera for video conferencing. My usage crosses a few different categories. Personally speaking, I use my office machine for lots of web surfing plus email, office type stuff using Microsoft services, OneDrive and their 365 subscription. I interface with my Synology NAS on the computer as well. Other uses include programming my home automation control 4 system with their software, managing family photos, scanning and printing, and of course doing all the activities for this channel to write, edit, and render content and manage it as well online. I video edit with Camtasia right now. In addition, I do my real day job on this machine, which includes a lot of web and office app-driven use, email, and a ton of Microsoft Teams interactions with meetings. Sometimes I'll remote desktop to another Windows computer as well for active software development or testing, but I'm a manager, not a developer, so I don't do that very often. First, the NUC. I've tried NUCs longer ago in the past, and I never stuck with them given the low performance relative to the small form factor, size, and heat and noise. This 10th gen model though, does work much better overall. It's generally quiet, kicking up the fans only when doing too many things, or particularly while rendering video. At that point though, I can feel a little bit of heat in my somewhat constrained office space, and the noise actually does get annoying. It's not just the whir of a fan noise as well, but a rattling and such that goes along with it. Performance wise though, I can't fault the NUC at all. 16 gigabytes of RAM in Windows is the minimum I go on any PC, and it can run a combination of a bunch of browsing tabs, Outlook, and more just fine. Windows 11 runs smooth and easy. Even with the early Insider builds, I never felt any instability out of it. I don't need much hard drive space on my office machine, just room for the operating system and some programs and some working files, particularly since I offload my larger file storage to my NAS, which also serves as a sync for my entire OneDrive. On the pain point side, I'd really only fault the noise and heat under load for the NUC and one other hassle. I don't know why, but when waking up from sleep, this combination of NUC and monitor or TV display often takes my open windows and squishes them into the upper left quadrant of the screen. Like somehow it turns on and fits a 1080p desktop first and then jumps to a full 4K size but not until after all the windows were pushed and resized up into that corner. It's a PITA having to reset the windows all the time. My wife runs the same NUC on a similar Sony TV for her, set, for her setup, and the machine does the same thing. Uh, it could be the TV, it could be the NUC, I honestly don't know, it's just terribly annoying. On the NUC itself though, positively, I do very much like having front ports for USB and headphones but I would be happier with four USBs on the back instead of two. Network LAN is stable and fast. I use wired gigabit LAN connection for my office setup and connection to my monitor is HDMI running the desktop in 4K60 with HDMI 2.0. Windows looks sharp and renders text in the desktop itself precisely. Input is great and Windows supports the full features of the Razer peripherals. One of the big negatives against the NUC though for me is the lack of access to so many things that are Apple based. 
I message with most of my contacts via iMessage. I read Twitter via Tweetbot. I use Apple Podcasts as my podcast app of preference, and I listen to a lot of podcasts throughout my day. We sub to Apple Music. I'm often browsing on Safari on my phone or my tablet, and there's no easy way to sync across from Safari on those devices to Edge on the NUC itself. So since COVID worked from home with the NUC, I've kept my iPad on a portrait stand right next to my display, and I'm constantly reaching for the combination of PC, phone, and tablet all day long when I'm using the NUC. I had generally been connecting to my Teams calls on the iPad as well itself prior to getting the USB camera. With the NUC, it's just a juggle of devices all day long. Enter the Mac Mini and the hopeful opportunity to leave my phone and tablet untouched while sitting at my desk due to having the direct access to all those various Apple services and apps right on the computer itself. So how's it work? First things first, the Mac Mini has a much bigger physical footprint versus the NUC. I keep both machines tucked right under my display and the Mini still fits, but it is much bigger. The Mini also puts all the darn ports on the back. I have to finagle around for USB access. I have to finagle around to plug my ear pods into the back of the machine, thus leaving barely enough precious cable length to get up to my ears while seated in my chair. Don't sit back too far. Seriously, Apple, I don't need a solid, clean, nice looking metal front. Put the freaking usable ports, the needed ports, on the front of the computer for convenient access. The machine itself, though, is blazing fast. Apps open in a snap, multitasking is fast and easy. It's amazing how smooth this machine feels with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. Although I do at times notice that Mac OS kills or pauses active windows or windows that have gone into the background fairly quickly. For longer term use, I think I would certainly err on the side of caution and get the 16 gigabytes of RAM unit and probably a 512 SSD as well. But I purchased this starter to really evaluate and see if this will actually work for me before I consider a more expensive or custom order or whatever. Having that direct access though to all the Apple stuff is really just a dream. Podcast app synced also to my phone and tablet, check. Messages with iCloud sync, check. Tweetbot for Mac native app with iCloud sync, check. Apple Music, yup. TV app access to my iTunes purchases, yup. Debug mode unlocked on my Apple TVs via Xcode, check. So many neat things. I know I can get some of this stuff as well if you use iTunes on Windows, but it's just not as good at all for anything other than a little bit of Apple Music at best. And forget about reliable podcast access through iTunes on Windows. As hoped, I can use my desktop computer all day long and my phone just sits on the charger until I leave with it. And my iPad also just sits idle there until I need to take it away from my desk for mobile computing like a laptop with the Magic Keyboard. It's just awesome, pure awesome. Now, I'm still using the Razer keyboard and mouse, which is somewhat of a gimping factor to Mac OS, I realize, but they honestly aren't that bad. I just wish the Razer software actually worked in the most recent versions of Mac OS to actually enable the special features and special keys and so on. If I stick to the mini long term, I probably will swap those out with something, just not sure what yet. I really hate the feel of Apple's Magic Mouse and I don't think I can go entirely trackpad based as well. And I do love the feel of the bigger mechanical gaming style keyboard, so we'll see. Everything else just works great on the Mini 2. Microsoft Office apps are all solid. Teams is good, although I do wish Microsoft Teams could be installed through the Mac App Store. It's like the only piece of Microsoft software I need that's not in there yet. I'm using the native Apple Mail, Contacts, and Calendar apps for now, but I think I will ultimately switch back to Outlook. I mainly do use Safari, but I also keep Edge installed for occasional need as well. Camtasia works just as well on Mac for editing as it did on Windows, maybe even a little bit better. However, the rendering time. My goodness, the M1 just screams through video encoding. I don't have a specific measure of time comparing them machine to machine on the same video, but rendering is something on the NUC that I could start, walk away from, and come back to still see the machine computing away. And when rendering video on the NUC, forget about doing anything else at that point in time. The M1 though is just sick. It cranks through video in what feels like at least half the time or less than the NUC. It barely gets warm. It doesn't make any noise. And you can continue doing whatever else you want to do on the machine at the same time as rendering video. And the time to render still just wrecks the NUC. It's crazy. On the negative side for the Mini, I do think Windows just looks better on the big 43 inch 4K display. Text and font rendering is just better. Something sharper, 
Something with Mac OS on a display like that just doesn't present as clean as Windows does. And I noticed this when I was using the docked laptops as well. I was hoping that it wouldn't exist with the Mini, but it still does. Pretty lame. Mac OS feels also sometimes a little more like a toy, where to me, Windows feels more powerful, more professional. Of course, I'm still adapting to various usability differences between the operating systems, interface changes and workflow differences, which is fine. None of that's turning me off to the Mini or Mac OS specifically, so I'm just taking it in stride. I think I really need some gesture control though and such and, and to make Mac OS realize its full power. One other really neat thing about the integration between the Apple devices, I was making a video for a channel one of the other nights and I needed to quickly snap a picture that I wanted to right away drop into the video and, and keep editing. The, my normal process for getting pictures off of my camera is to take the photo, sync to OneDrive, have the photo pulled down to my NAS through OneDrive and then copy it to the machine. But using the Mac and having my iPhone, in a matter of seconds I was able to just airdrop the photo right from the phone to the desktop. That kind of integration is what you get when you have all of the devices, the hardware, the software, and the services from one company. And it just works great. One of the last things I did do with the Mini as well was to set up a Windows 11 on ARM virtual machine using Parallels via the latest Insider builds. It was incredibly simple to do and pretty much automatic. I need access to really just one main Windows application for my home automation system. And the VM itself though, it runs great. Again, even on this really weakest machine. Maybe I'll expand on that in a future video. Although Microsoft just said that they might not be supporting the use of Windows in this way. Lame, lame, lame Microsoft if that's the case. Another pain point, I tried an M1 MacBook Air when they first came out and one of the most amazing things that you could do at the time was to sideload your iPad apps fairly easily directly into Mac OS. Having access to a selection of excellent iPad specific apps right on the single computer was an epiphany. Apple though wiped this sideloading capability out. So frustrating. As it stands, there are a few iPad apps that I use that are officially released in the Mac App Store, like Control 4 and Kaleidoscape. But it's so nice having native iPad apps on the Mac, and I need a lot, I want a whole lot more. Apple needs to push devs to deliver on the promise of iPad apps on Mac OS and get the darn store loaded with a lot more stuff. I want Marvel Unlimited, control apps for more of my devices, like from Denon and Marantz. I want the Tesla app, Kindle, Audible, and a whole lot more. This is needed to truly make Mac and Mac OS a real one-stop, one ring of computing, and I hope they finally get some traction. I tweet and give feedback all the time to companies for iPad apps to please be brought to the Mac App Store. So what am I going to keep? I haven't fully decided yet, but I'm probably leaning towards the Mini. Having the Apple stuff is just too convenient. I'm not gaming on this system, so that idea is moot. And the Mini just really wipes the floor with the NUC in so many ways. It feels clean, integrated, sophisticated in ways that the NUC does it. As I use it more and I get more familiar with Mac OS, and upgrade my input devices to actually strengthen Mac use, I'm sure it'll only get better as well. Where this leaves me for gaming still, I don't know. Having the NUC always felt like it made more sense if my gaming was also on a custom built Windows PC and I keep teetering and tottering between consoles and that gaming computer itself. But in general, I thought using a Mac felt more in line if I were going to stick to gaming on console, but maybe those two choices, uh, they don't have to coincide as much as they thought they did. Maybe they really don't matter or they're not interdependent on each other. So intermediate term, maybe I will stick to this little base model mini and hopefully sooner than later, we'll see an M1X or an M2 and I'll make that the 16 gig of RAM, bigger SSD machine that I'll stick with for a long time. I don't wanna be waiting around too long though. And such is the risk and reward in tech of waiting for something versus buying what's available right now. So that's my NUC versus Mac mini comparison. If you have any questions about either system, please ask them in the comments. I'll update in the future how it's going, and if I stick with the Mini for sure, I'll plan to add more coverage like this to the channel. If you have something specific you'd like to listen to me comments on, test, or discuss relative to these types of things, computing in general, also let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.